Hello and welcome to IBD School. My name is Peter Higgins. I'm a physician and researcher at the University of Michigan. In this video, IBD School 205, we will talk about what causes flares in IBD. A flare in IBD is an increase in inflammatory disease activity. We generally classify a flare as a clinical flare if the patient notices a substantial increase in symptoms accompanying the increase in inflammation. However, a flare can also be subclinical, which means that while there is an increase in gut inflammation, the patient experiencing the flare may not notice any increase in symptoms. Patients who have a subclinical flare, however, are dramatically more likely to have a clinical flare in the next six months. We do not have a clear explanation for what causes most flares. However, we do know of several factors that can cause flares. The first is infection of the gut. A study in children with IBD has shown that in IBD patients who have infections with Clostridium difficile, 57% will need hospitalization, and 67% will require an escalation of IBD therapy in the next six months. We also know that patients who get gut infections with bacteria like Salmonella, Shigella, or Campylobacter are much more likely to be diagnosed with IBD in the next few years. There are many other infections of the gut, including noroviruses and enteroviruses. Because these are not commonly tested for, we don't know if these also cause IBD flares. However, we think that any gut infection that activates the immune system could theoretically cause an IBD flare by activating the immune response of the gut. A second cause of IBD flares could be the use of medications that cause ulcerations of the intestines. These are most commonly non-steroidal pain medications like ibuprofen, aspirin, diclofenac, and naproxen. All of these can cause ulcerations in the small intestine and colon, which break the barrier between gut bacteria and the immune system. We think that this exposure of gut bacteria to the immune system activates the immune system of the gut, causing a flare of IBD. This has been shown to be true in randomized controlled trials of IBD patients who took pain medications. Patients who took naproxen were much more likely to have a flare than patients taking another pain medicine called celecoxib or Celebrex, which causes less ulcerations in the intestines. However, many people with IBD have flares without a clear, identifiable cause. We now know of several things that do not cause flares. One is particular foods, and another is psychological stress, though each of these have important exceptions. If particular foods contain medications or chemicals that cause ulceration of the intestine, this may well lead to flares. If psychological stress leads to loss of sleep, it appears that this loss of sleep may well contribute to flares also, caused more by the lack of sleep than the stress itself. In addition, we do know that patients who have biologic remission and really good control of their inflammation in IBD seem to be more resistant to changes in their diet or changes in psychological stress levels. On the other hand, patients who have subclinical inflammation seem to be much more likely to tip over into a flare when they undergo changes in diet or psychological stress or changes in sleep. Meanwhile, a lot of research is going into what causes flares in IBD. In 2016, our group is planning to test a 22-agent infection panel to see if other infections might be associated with flares in IBD. Remember the ways you can help prevent flares. Monitor your inflammation, avoid non-steroidal medications as much as possible, and try to get adequate sleep. If you have subclinical inflammation on a test like fecal calprotectin or CRP, think about adjusting your medications to a different dose or adding medications in order to reduce your future risk of flares. I'm Peter Higgins, and thank you for watching IBD School 205.